Miss Lands has a huge amount of new content and there is so much to learn. Today, I'm going to give you some tips that will really help with your Miss Lands journey. Let me know in the comments how many of these things you didn't know. I'm giving away free copies of Valheim to my subscribers. Plus, I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers and then I'd get one of these, which would really mean the world to me. So please do consider subscribing. So Miss Lands is, of course, quite misty. And when you run in there for the first time, the visibility is going to be very poor. However, there are a number of ways that we can clear this mist so that we can see what we're doing and run around a bit more safely. And the best option for this will be this thing right here, which is the Wisp Light. And similar to the Meganyord, it can just be right clicked to equip it. And as we see here, once equipped, it clears the mist in a radius around us. And as we run around through the mist lands, this radius will keep clearing ahead of us. Now, it doesn't give you tons of visibility far off into the distance, but there's not really a way of doing that in the game. The only option really for walking around is going to be this Wisp Light. Now, it's important to mention that the Wisp Light cannot be equipped at the same time as the Meganyord. If we right click the Meganyord, then the Wisp Light will turn off and vice versa. That being said, it is probably still the best option, so let's have a look at how we get it. This video is sponsored by VKNG, who make incredible Viking jewelry and outfits. Right now, they are doing a sale for the Black Friday with up to 60% off, and when you use my link, you'll get an extra 10% off for the next 48 hours. Just click the link in the description and it will take you there. VKNG have a huge range of rings, bracelets, necklaces, clothes, watches, and more. If you want to symbolize your inner Viking, VKNG have the products for you. So click the link in the description now to get your discount on VKNG products. So in order to get the Wisp Light, you'll need to craft up one of these things right here. This is the Wisp Fountain. So it looks like this and it can be placed in any biome. You see we're just in a meadows biome here and we can place it down. The recipe for it is just 10 stone and one torn spirit. The torn spirit is gained when you kill Yagluth. If you've previously killed Yagluth before Mist Lands, then the Yagluth drop turns into the torn spirit. When we look at the Wisp Fountain, you can see that it says it demands dark. Darkness. So this won't actually do anything during the day, but let me set it to nighttime and then I'll show you it in action. Okay, so now it says the wisps are coming. So let's go ahead and unequip our wisp light because it will be a bit confusing else and we should see them coming in pretty soon. Okay, here we go, guys. The first wisp has been attracted. There he is. And as you can see, when you hover over it, if you can find it, all you do is press E and you can pick it up. There we go. Finally got that one. There we go. So this is what you will get. These little wisps right here. And these are used in the crafting process for the wisp light. To craft the wisp light, all you need is a workbench at level one or higher of course and you can see here the wisp light recipe and all it requires is one of those wisps that we just got and also one silver now another solution for clearing some mist which is also a weapon is the mist walker sword so let's go ahead and equip that and see the difference that this makes and here we go it's starting to clear and there you can see it has cleared a little bit of an area now it's not as good as the wisp light right because we can see here like this area that's been cleared it's a little bit less right if we go ahead and unequip that a second and then equip the wisp light and you'll see there is quite a big difference but nonetheless it is an item that will clear the mist and it can be used at the same time of course as the Meganyord and of course is a weapon. Now if we equip it at the same time as the Wisp Light, the Wisp Light just overrides it and so it just does the extra so you don't get any benefit of having both equipped than you would by just having the Wisp Light equipped. Although it does look kind of cool and is a pretty decent sword as you can see from the stats on screen there now. Incidentally to make the Mistwalker sword you will need a Black Forge and if we scroll down here this is the recipe for it so it does require fine wood, iron, refined iter and wisp. I did make a video that is a full compilation of all the new weapons, tools, and armor in Mistlands if you want more information on how to make these forges or the weapons. Now there are some more permanent solutions to clearing the mist in the form of the wisp torch right here, which you can see needs one wisp and one Yggdrasil wood. So if I go ahead and place this down in the mist, you'll see how this works. It basically clears a radius around it and it's a reasonable sized area. So if you wanted to make a road through Mistlands or you're making a base there and wanted to clear a lot of the mist around your base, then you could place down a lot of these things. Now this final point isn't a way of actually clearing the mist as such, but what it will do is help you to navigate the Mistlands terrain. And that is to come higher up, because as you can see, when you come higher up, the mist up here is cleared quite a bit, and we can see around us for a little bit of a way. And you have to watch areas for a little bit. You can see there's a dungeon there that just about comes into view, or some sort of structure at least there, comes into view, then the mist comes back over it, and then it goes again. So you have to keep looking around to see what you can see. But over time, this can be a way that can be quite helpful for you to just sort of navigate through before you have a wisp light, or if you're just looking for structures or something like that. It can also be a great way to escape from mobs if they are chasing you and you have the stamina to run up these big hills. This is especially going to help if you have the Feather Falling Cape. So let's take a look at that right now. So I've gone ahead and equipped the Feather Cape and what we're going to do now is simply jump off here and you'll see that we fall really, really slowly and we're not actually going to take any full damage whatsoever. As you see when I hover over it, the Feather Cape has minus 100% full damage, which is awesome. So by running up to those high areas and jumping off, you won't take any damage and you might be able to escape mobs that way. Now to make the Feather Cape, you will need the Galder Table right here and you'll need 10 feathers, 5 scale hide, which 
you get from hairs and also 20 of the refined ITER, which you can make in the ITER refinery in order to make the feather cape. Again, there's a link in the description to a video that goes into all this crafting stuff in more detail. So soft tissue is needed to be processed in the ITER refinery in order to get the refined ITER, which is used for many things in the game, like different recipes and things like that. And there are a couple ways you can get it. One is to find these NPCs. So we got these guys right here. And these are the Diverga rogues and mages. And yes, I know I'm saying that wrong, but I can't seem to get it right. <laughs> but these guys right here, if we go ahead and kill them, you'll see that one of their drops is soft tissue. And there we go, some soft tissue right there that we were able to just pick up. Incidentally, you'll always find a Diverga component crate, so do smash those open and get yourself the Diverga extractor. That's used in the making of the sap extractor. Just a little side tip there. But you can see that from raiding this whole camp, and I do feel I got unlucky, but even so, I only got one of the soft tissue. But there's actually a much better way to get a ton of soft tissue very quickly. And that is to find this thing right here, which is, of course, petrified bone in the shape of a skull. You can find petrified bone like this as well, which is sort of like the ribs of the structure, but the skull is what we're interested in for the soft tissue. Now, with your pickaxe, you're able to mine away at the petrified bone and get some resources from it in the form of black marble. See there, we got 11 black marble from this little bit of jaw, and if we did this area here, we'd get a lot of black marble from that as well. A little side tip, if you mine out all these bottom pieces here that are connected to the ground, and you go ahead and do that the whole way around the rib cage, everything above it will just crumble, and you'll get a ton of black marble very quickly. However, back to the soft tissue, what you need to do is mine into the skull like this, into where the brain would be. And look at this, we have a ton of soft tissue. So the idea is that you're basically mining into the brain of this fallen giant that has its remains left here. So let's go and mine this whole soft tissue area out, and then I'll show you guys how much I got from just this one skull. Do be sure to mine down below the floor when you're doing this, as I found that when I'm doing that, I'm unlocking a lot more soft tissue that was actually hidden before I mined the ground out. And you can see here, guys, I've dug down a little way and there's still more underneath. And I've dug down like a reasonable amount from the ground level that we came in at. So do be sure to really dig down quite far in order to get all the soft tissue out of this area. So as you can see, I've dug out quite a big area here now. And if I open up my inventory, we got 38 soft tissue from this one skull. So this is a much better way of doing it to get a lot of soft tissue very quickly. Well, guys, I hope you're sitting comfortably because I certainly am with the new comfort level of 23, as you can see at the top of my screen right now. So previously, I think 21 was the highest comfort we could get in Valheim, and it did require special items like the Christmas tree and the maypole in order to achieve it. However, there are a couple new items that have been added in Mistlands that actually add to the comfort you can have, making the new total highest comfort 23. Now, this is after a fair bit of testing, and I can't seem to find a way of getting it any higher than 23. But if you do know one, let me know down in the comments. So how do we achieve that? Well, what we need are the following items. First of all, the long table that I'm stood on. Then we need the dragon bed, we need the jacuzzi, and we need some sort of banner. On top of that, we need an armor stand, we need some sort of throne, and I went for the new black metal throne because obviously this is Mistlands, why not? You're also going to need the Christmas tree and the maypole to be nearby, so obviously you can find a maypole in-game, or you can make them during the season that Valheim allows it, so that's during the summer period in the Northern Hemisphere. And the Christmas tree is able to be made during the Christmas period, so you just need to basically time it well and build that stuff in your worlds when you have the opportunity. You'll also need to make sure you have a raging half fire, of course, that is the best comfort level fire you can have in the game. And then the thing that makes the big difference, guys, is all of the rugs. So let's go ahead and open up my uh, build menu right here and have a look at these. So we've got here the Lox rug, Wolf rug, Deer rug, the Red Jute carpet, and the two new rugs, being the Blue Jute carpet and, of course, the Hair rug. So placing each of those down adds one comfort. Every rug adds a comfort level, and, of course, we have two new rugs, which is why we now have two extra comfort levels. Some of the new Mistlands items do give comfort. So, for example, you've got, like, new Mistlands banners, and we've got, like, a Mistlands bench and stuff like that, and even, like, the Mistlands table here. However, from my testing, they don't give any extra comfort on top of what we can already get within the game. Now, I will do a full comfort guide for Miss Lands very soon, where I try all this stuff in much more detail, but I found this thing and I thought I'd include it in today's video because those extra comfort points could be really handy. So as you see, if I go into this little hut here, because we do need to be sheltered and we shut the door and stand here, we get a comfort level of 23. And as you're about to see, that means my rested buff is now going to max out at 30 minutes. So we get half an hour of comfort and rested bonus, which is absolutely fantastic. So hopefully that's useful, guys. And the next thing we're going to take a look at is how you can actually shelter in different structures around Mistlands. So you can get your rested buff up even while you're there. So we talked about these structures earlier where you can mine the petrified bone and of course the soft tissue inside the skull. However, you'll see here that if we stand underneath the petrified bone structure here in this rib cage, we actually get the shelter bonus from it. So we could go ahead and place down a campfire in here and then we can actually get a rested buff from just being sat in here by the campfire. And there you go. We got a 10 minute rested bonus now because we've got the basic comfort at level three. Now on top of that, you can also make up a bed inside here. And if I set it to nighttime, I can go ahead and actually sleep under this structure here. And we've woke 
back up the following morning. And this has two benefits. First of all, we've reset our spawn points. So if we die, we're now going to respawn at this bed and still be in the Mistlands, hopefully somewhere near our grave. And secondly, we've now made it daytime, which might be a bit easier for exploring the Mistlands than to do so during the night. Now, as I said earlier, if we mine into these skulls, we can get these soft tissue. But also, once you do so and you walk into them, you can get the sheltered buff in here as well. So again, this is another area in the Mistlands where you could come and get yourself the rested buff. On top of that, you'll see many structures that look like this within Mistland, and some of them are dungeons, some of them are keeps with the Diverga rogues and things in them, but you'll see quite a lot of them throughout. Again, if we go inside here, we can go ahead and place down a little fire, and we've got the sheltered effect. And you can also place down a bed in these as well, and sleep in here, and even turn it into like a little base if you wanted to. Some other places you can get the shelter buff include under these giant roots, if you can get to the right spot, as you see there, we've got shelter here. Also, inside certain of these ancient armor structures, you'll get shelter, and you can even get shelter under certain rock formations if they spawn in just the right way. Some of you may be wondering whether you can get shelter under these giant bridges here, but from what I've found, it doesn't seem to work. I guess the bridge is just too high up and there's not enough coverage around us for shelter to be a thing. That being said, if you were to box yourself in like this, you could get shelter from this. I mean, I don't know if this is useful, but I found it, so there. Now you know this as well. And another place you can get your rested buff is, of course, inside the dungeons in Mistlands. However, you'll see you're not able to place a bed down in the dungeon. You can, however, place signs, and this could be kind of useful because these dungeons are tricky to explore, so placing signs for directions towards the exit might be very helpful. Some other random things you can place in dungeons include wood stacks, and all different types of wood stacks as you see here. Interestingly, you can place traps in dungeons, and that definitely could have some uses, although probably not as many uses as the fact that you can place a ballista in dungeons. That is awesome. You can also place like coins and coin piles in dungeons, and probably a few other things, but honestly, I'm not sure what the use is anymore at this stage. But the point is, you can definitely get your shelter in here and get your rested buff that way. However, the point of all this is that stamina is incredibly important in Mistlands, and obviously having the rested buff is really going to help with that, as well as making sure you don't die too often. So if we walk up to Halder and talk to him, you'll see that these are the only trades that are here, and several of them are not unlocked, including, of course, the egg trade. Now, what I'm going to do is just quickly cheat in Yagluth and then kill him, and then we'll see the difference this makes. So here we go, Yagluth is coming up here in the Black Forest, because I'm just quickly <laughs> cheating this in to show you how it works. And there we are, we're going to kill him and set a world record for the fastest time anyone ever killed Yagluth. <laughs> so we did, of course, get three Torn Spirits from killing him, and that unlocked the Wisp Fountain recipe. Just random little extra tip there. But now, if we go back to Haldor, you will see, there we go, that the egg recipe is in fact here. So the way you unlock the egg recipe is by killing Yagluth. So now let's go and see how we're able to hatch those eggs and, of course, breed the chickens. So I've placed down three different types of fire here, the campfire, bonfire, and also the hearth. And I've placed an egg very close to each of them. And if we look at the egg, each one of them says that it is still too cold. So when they're placed next to these fires, that is not enough on its own to make the egg warm enough. I've now gone ahead and just placed some walls around the fireplace, and you'll see now the egg there says warm. And I did this for all of the different fires, so this one here is still saying too cold, interestingly enough, as is this one here. So it seems they need to be in quite a closed-in environment, and if we put a roof over the top of these, I'm sure it would work. But this one right here seems to be the most efficient way of doing it, when you've got just the normal campfire and a closed-in environment like this. But if you find that your egg is not getting warm enough, you're going to need to put a roof over the top of the building and the fire in order to get it warm enough for the egg. Interestingly enough, if I place the egg here, you'll see it now says warm, even though it's just got one roof piece above it. So it looks like that's all you need to do is place a roof piece above the egg. And the same for this one here on top of the half. So basically have a roof piece over the egg or have it very closed in like we did with this one in order for it to work. So now what I'm going to do is time exactly how long it takes in order for the egg to hatch. Okay, I'm pretty sure this egg is about to hatch, guys. I'm going to try and get the animation of that on camera for you so you can see it. So let's wait with it a few more minutes and see how we go. So after a lot of testing, guys, I have found out some interesting things about chickens and chicken breeding and hens. So first of all, after watching the chickens for about 45 minutes, they hadn't yet grown up into hens. So I then ran the command in-game in order to simulate sleep. And when I did so, they turned into hens then. So I think they might just need days to pass or a certain amount of time in-game. I'm not entirely sure on that. But as I say, I will make a full video about this in the future. Now, the hens will eat seeds. So they've been eating like turnip seeds and carrot seeds and stuff like that. And I think they also eat dandelions. So that's the stuff that 
that they'll eat and that's what gives them the hearts in game like with all Valheim animal breeding they get the pink hearts and the yellow hearts when they're in love just like that there perfect timing thanks guys and when they breed what they do is lay an egg and these eggs are kept warm if your chickens are in a coop sort of area so you do need to protect them with walls and you also need like a fire nearby so your best bet for chicken breeding would be to get an egg and place it in a chicken coop that you'd already built that has four walls probably a roof is a good idea as well and some sort of fire nearby that way the egg will be warm and will eventually hatch into the hen now, i believe you will need two eggs in order to get your farm started off again i'll test all this properly in the proper chicken breeding video but today i just wanted to give a little overview of how this works and once that's done you'll of course have an infinite chicken and hen farm to get all the chicken drops and feathers and all that good stuff now with the addition of magic to the game no tips video for mistlands would be complete without at least referring to it a little bit so the first thing to talk about are the new foods which will give you ita and this ita is used in order to cast magical spells so the four foods currently in the game which will give you ita are as follows first we have this right here the seeker aspic which gives an ita of 85 the yggdrasil porridge gives 80 the stuffed mushroom gives 75 and the mage caps give 25 for a full rundown on mistlands magic you can watch the magic guide i made on my channel but if we go ahead and eat up a few of these foods you'll see we start to gain ita with a purple ita bar that generates in the same way that the stamina will generate and like stamina this ita is then used up every time we cast a spell now if we make a dead razor and the recipe for that is on screen right here then we can go ahead and equip that and use it to spawn up a skeleton and here he comes now this is a blood magic spell so what that means is that as well as using up ita it'll actually use up some of your hp now the way this works is it will use up a percentage of your total hp so you can never actually kill yourself by doing this if you just keep using the spells over and over again that are blood magic it won't kill you it'll just keep taking a little bit less hp each time another cool item is the staff of protection and here's the recipe for that one but if we go ahead and hold that and cast it whilst around all these tamed animals you'll see that as well as protecting us with this shield it protects all those animals as well so that includes lards the undead skeleton that we raised a tamed boar here we've got a tamed lox here as well there's also a tamed hen that the locks were still on top of but there it is and a wolf over here so you get the idea the staff of protection when cast nearby to tamed creatures will protect them as well as yourself and this works on a cooldown basis as you can see the countdown there in the top right i believe if you cast this near your viking friends on a multiplayer server they too will also get protected now when it comes to these skeletons that we raised from the dead i did have a couple of questions like for example will it follow us onto a boat okay so he's swimming out here so they are able to swim looks like he's gone towards the ladder but no i think he's not able to get onto the boat as such so now i've gone ahead and made a little bridge here and we'll see if he'll like come on this bridge if we get him lined up in the right way so let's see if we can get him across and onto the boat looks like he doesn't want to use these stairs i'm not sure why and if he goes too much into the water he can't get back out here so we've got to be careful with this okay seems he doesn't want to use stairs and in general getting them onto boats is looking like it's going to be tricky so my next question is can we raise the dead when we're actually stood on a boat so let's see if this works or not so it looks like we were able to cast the spell but will he come up onto the boat there, there he is okay he's on the boat all right let's quickly get onto this boat right now and start sailing and see what happens so i'm really curious to see if he stays on this boat or not and so far it actually looks like he does so it seems like if you raise them whilst you're actually on a boat they will get on the boat and you've got a little traveling companion who just dances for you on the whole journey as you go along so that is kind of cool and my next question is what happens if we dock up so i'm going to dock to the land just over here just like go crash onto this land and see when we get off the boat is he able to get off with us okay so i've run up here he's following a little bit but looks like he's just stuck on the boat he's just forever on that boat so i guess he can't jump off the boat if we were to destroy the boat then uh, yeah obviously he could probably like swim ashore but yeah he's kind of just stuck there all right so a final boat related question is to go back out into the ocean a bit and see what happens when a serpent comes and whether or not he tries to attack it okay so he's definitely got triggered as you can see here and he's running over trying to get to the serpent but he doesn't seem able to do so not really surprising as soon as he can't get off the boat and he's trying his best he wants to and he did have a swing in there but he just hit the boat i think i did have a final question when it comes to these guys and that is will they be able to follow us through a portal and i kind of doubt it but at the same time i really want to check so i'm going to let him get super close to me so that's as close as he's coming and then i'm going to walk through the portal now because i'm in cheat mode it did it instantly and he's actually running to us from there which is interesting because that would be out the line of sight for most mobs but he's still trying to get to us so the answer is he will not actually run through a portal with us but he does follow us which is kind of funny so if i just go ahead and fly like miles away right now is he going to just like eventually come is he going to just keep walking towards me let's find out and the answer is no i'm just about far enough here that he can't see me at all uh but i can see him and he's just sort of he's running he's sort of trying to get to me but he can't really figure it out so i think if you go too far they just sort of get lost in any event if they were trying to come back to us over a large distance they would attack all the creatures on the way and eventually this would kill them anyway still that did answer a lot of questions i had about these guys and hopefully answered a few questions for you guys too
too. One final thing to mention about the Staff of Protection guys is it has a parry bonus of 20, which is absolutely huge. So I've spawned in a troll to show this. Let's let him try and hit us and then we can parry him. And there we go. Look how long he's parrying for. He's absolutely shook up. And there we go. We did it again. So yeah, the parry bonus on this thing is insane and definitely something you guys will no doubt play around with and have a lot of fun with. But 20 times, I mean, yeah, that, that really is huge. Now, I thought it's worth mentioning the Wisp Light can come in handy in any biome at night time, not just in Mistlands, as a bit of a light as you're running through. On top of that, it can be handy when exploring dungeons as well, because it will just circle around you and light up the area without taking up any of your hands. So once you've got the Wisp Light, it's worth thinking about it in other biomes as well and not thinking that it's only for Mistlands. Now, as a final fun little tip, when you get refined Ita and you place it down on the floor or even in item stands, it will shoot off like this. Now, this makes for an awesome nighttime light show, but as you saw there, it will actually damage things as well. So it can damage players and buildings and also mobs. So be careful, have fun with it, but this is definitely something to explore. It could be very useful as base defense or ways of pranking friends or even in Gradle farms and things like that. And as I say, it's even just a fantastic light show to do of an evening. So a nice fun tip to end on. The dad jokes are of course coming, but I just wanted to say a quick thank you once again to VKNG for sponsoring this video. Do check them out, link in description for you to get your discount. But for now guys, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. A turtle is crossing the road when he's mugged by two snails. When the police asked him what happened, the shaken turtle replies, I don't know. It all happened so fast. We all know about Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. But have you heard about Cole's Law? It's thinly sliced cabbage. What do you call James Bond in a bath? Bubble 07.